humanitarian assistance is dropped by parachutes from a small cargo plane and the material is taken care of. Blankets, rice, shoes and clothing are some of the items to be doled out around the central village of Nakar by the US troops who now have been here for a few days. The Afghan villagers watch, interested in what the foreigners are doing. Otherwise, not much goes on around her. At the district centre in the car, a so-called combat outpost has been established. The aim is, together with approximately 20 Afghan policemen and military, to show that they are able to control the area. But it is not solely for a show of military strength the troops in the 503rd Airborne Battalion came here. The troops also tried to win the hearts and minds of the people by listening to their problems and needs. Two platoons later leave for a visit to some villages in the area. The Nakar district is difficult to reach up in the high mountains in the Paktika province in Afghanistan. The area is inhabited by Pashtun tribes who are supportive of the Taliban movement, which is said to operate freely over the border to Pakistan, about 30 kilometers east. The 503rd Airborne makes up some 14,000 US troops in the 42,000 strong NATO forces operating under a UN mandate. Additionally, the US keeps 13,000 soldiers waging a war on the Taliban insurgency in the southeastern parts of Afghanistan. The soldiers move up the valley. The peasants grow rice in the lower-lying irrigated fields and keep sheep and goats higher up. When they enter the first village, Staranara, the village council with the elders have already gathered. Okay, Tom, I brought the leaders from the coalition forces and we'd like to sit down and talk with them about how we can help their town throughout the winter. Okay, all right, uh, we'll do it right here then. Uh, we, tell them we brought medicine, we brought clothes. Uh, we'd like to give that stuff out to you guys, but this is a completely peaceful operation. Hey, can, I, can I have you take your guys and put some security up? Um, especially up near that building right there with the black windows. That's the one that kind of The Afghan soldiers take up guard positions together with the Americans among the houses. One part in fighting the Taliban insurgency is creating confidence for the Afghan security forces. This is probably the first time ever that Afghan government forces visit Nakar, where the authorities can exert very little control. But the villagers promise to cooperate and report eventual insurgents. If you've seen any criminal, we will report there. If you can't, we will kill them or we don't let them come. That's that's perfect. That's the that's the exact relationship that we want to have with you guys. The Afghan government representative accompanying the soldiers arrive and greets the villagers and talks about their needs. Since several years, the Staranara village is in a conflict with the neighboring village Zirok about rights to cut down forest. That was on the mountain and they killed three of us. Behind over there is just wilderness that belongs to no one, but we had conflict over that area. So they set up an ambush when we were coming on the road and killed three of us. After that there have been hostilities between us. The American troops are offered tea. Zirok is a Taliban stronghold which makes the villages in Staranara more prone to cooperate against the insurgents but only if they get support in their conflict about the forest. This is one example of the difficulties in creating a lasting stability in the country. Later, the troops are back at the outpost. Radio contact with the headquarters is kept during all times, and the approximately 100 men live primitively here. They serve one year in Afghanistan, and the 503rd Airborne has been attacked several times. Suddenly, a request from the headquarters comes in on the radio. The neighboring combat outpost in Zorok has been attacked and needs help. Positions of the enemy, Alij Taliban, are given and counter fire with a mortar are given. We have one of our cops, approximately uh, 
three miles to the east. It, uh, we were, it, they received nine mortar rounds, and uh, we were helping, helping them out by firing at the enemy right now. Two, nine, six, seven. Charge four. Charge four. Elevation 1074. 1074. Ten mortar grenades are fired at the enemy position. The Afghan troops watch the shots hit their targets. An F-15 combat airplane flies over. If the outpost is attacked, air support can be called in. An Air Force soldier keeps the communication. Rage 37, Hard Rock 52, over. Nothing more happens during the night, but the troops are kept under high alert. In the morning, more visits to the villages await. During a briefing, the security routines are checked. If we take contact, uh, we've got the scouts up on hill uh, 2676, which is just it's the hilltop uh, just behind the first village that we're going to hit. And just east Attacks against Afghan right? civilians we're and security, our security our forces have increased. We'll, uh, Last year, more than 6,000 were killed. Contact. Um, to this adds the approximately 200 killed from the ISAF force, the International Protection Force, where the U.S. troops take up a part. In Zarook, where we have a, uh, a combat outpost, there's been many attacks, upwards of 15 uh, indirect fire, direct fire attacks. And then um, on the way to, to Zarook, we have been ambushed or uh, attacked many times, maybe 20 in the past year. The houses are just ruins. Most villagers have not returned from refuge in neighboring countries because there is no possibility to work and survive there. The assistance given out is gratefully received. <laughs> Naka usually has a bustling market, but when the US troops enter, people get cautious like the soldiers. The villagers look at the international forces with great resentment and are equally suspicious towards the central government. Many here allegedly support and protect the Taliban insurgency, who normally control the area. All help could not be handed out in the villages. With donkeys, the rest is picked up at the district center. A boy with an inflammation in the throat receives medicine. The people have to visit the district center for all concerns with the nominal authorities, but few dare come here. The appointed district chief is frustrated. If I have the position as the chief of the district, that means I should meet the people of the district. People here have lots of problems and applications to the authorities, but if they don't come here, then my presence here is of no use. Cold weather gear and, uh, and food to give out. More days pass with several village visits. Snow starts falling. The humanitarian campaigning of the US troops have lasted eight days now. In total, seven villages were visited and almost two tons of foodstuffs and clothing were given out. The mission is accomplished, but the bad weather prevents the helicopters from flying the soldiers back. The mood is low when they walk back to the outpost. But two days later, the weather allows flights back to the main base. Material to be transported back is carried out to the helicopter landing zone and the goods which will be left is burned, not to fall into the hands of the enemy when the troops leave the district centre. Only the Afghan policemen will stay here, but they are not strong enough to cope with eventual Taliban insurgents in the area. Because they are isolated and uh, they are in an area where we cannot get to them very often and the government cannot support them very often, it is very difficult to be a sole supporter of the government and not to play both sides. A heavy transport helicopter arrives. Ammunition and generators are loaded and the soldiers fly away in rounds. A 10-day mission is over. 
Maybe the will among the population to cooperate with the government and to stand up against the Taliban insurgency population in this area has increased slightly.